All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to start off by giving all praise to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Yahweh who the world ignorantly calls God, and Yahweh Shai who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Um, I'm going to entitle this video The End of the End of the End. Kind of like an inside joke. But, um, you know, I just wanted to elaborate on uh, stuff that we see going on right now. In the, uh, in the in the in the world inside joke <laughs> in the world um you know as of now i want to look back on uh 2019 real quick i remember um and as we were coming up with the names to uh to name you know 2020 you know elder apostle the Horn named 2020 the year of prophecy and i coined 2020 the year of revelation the year of tribulation okay because uh tribulation just means uh, you know time of trouble okay which is synonymous with you know revelation so you know whatever word you'd like to use is what i coined this year um so as we see both of the things you know both myself yasha and what uh tahar said both of our um names that we gave the year or predictions for the year they came true man this clearly was a year of prophecy and at the same time clearly a year of tribulation right a year of hardship especially for our people so-called you know blacks hispanics and native americans okay um but even jake i mean even uh, uh edom okay even you know so-called white men is um you know going through struggles right now Okay, and you can see it, man. Okay, you can you can see it. Uh, one way that you can see it without even asking people how they're financially doing is, um, you know, I remember last year, man, and the year before that, uh, you could always go to a store, and a lot of people would actually be able to fill carts all the way to the top, you know, because they have high-paying jobs. Um, usually, it's always, you know, the Edomites that you see doing it. Um, you know, so-called white people, but, um, you know, some, like a few black, you know, especially a black woman, right? Cause they're living off that child support and you know, that, uh, those gifts, those goodies from, uh, from Esau, um, such as, you know, section eight housing and, you know, the, um, you know, certain, you know, uh, uh, gifts the scriptures speak about. Surely oppression makes a wise man man, but a gift destroys the heart. Right, so, you know, devil, you know, Esau, Edom, get our people in a, you know, trick bag with these, you know, uh, little systems that got set around, you know, to help them out financially. Um, but, you know, that's all going to be taken away very soon, man, okay? Which I'm not going to, you know, ramble on, you know, I'll, I'll go on forever. Um, but getting back to the point. As I was saying with the grocery store, you know, last year you would see people, a lot of people would have full carts. But guess what? Now when you go to the store, let's just say Walmart, when you go to Walmart, I only see maybe one person in the store and even at the checkout who has a full cart. Everybody, which obviously when I say everybody, I'm saying a majority of people, the vast majority of people, for lack of better words, has a couple items at most a half cart it's very rare now to see somebody who's actually stocking up with a full cart and if you do see them it's either a they're a prepper preparing for you know more financial hardships and food shortages to come or um b they are how they work a high paying job. So, you know, they're able to stock up, you know, a full cart. Um, but most of the people you see, especially our people, you know, you always see them with that damn, you know, that cheap canned food and the damn, uh, what are those things called? Uh, the Raymond, yeah, the Raymond noodles. Got those Raymond noodles. And that's just what they had to live off of. Because of, you know the lack of a uh, lack of cash, but guess what though? That stuff is running out too. Okay, that stuff, the cheap canned food, 
and the uh, the ramen noodles, that stuff's starting to run out, man. Okay, and it's getting more expensive. The ones that they had in stock, they decided to up the price, even even if it's a few cents at a time, it still adds up, man. Say for an example, uh, I did a video before, but if you save your coins, I save my coins for a whole year. I mean, all my spare change I got, I got it to save up, you know, pretty much all my spare change I got for an entire 19 months, I saved up, and it ended up coming to about $1,100, man, so it just shows you that saving that spare change, spare change, inside joke, <laughs> um, but spare, you know, keeping that spare change really adds up, man, over time. Um, but you know, we're really at the end of the end of the end when you look at it. And how can you say that? Because the, if you look at America, right? If you look at Babylon the Great, which is America, not the Vatican City, uh, as, as that simp there on my, uh, on the right, uh, rock upon him, as he was saying, which a quick word on him real quick. You know, I've been trying to contact that brother for a good four or five days now to see what he's up to. And he gets no response, no response. And I even went to his YouTube page. And apparently, he fell out of the truth. He turned his gaming, he turned his page, his truth channel, quote unquote truth, because he's teaching that Christianity. But um, he changed it to a rapping channel. He changed it to a rapping channel. And I don't mean it's not like the good raps like damn Sakari. It's that, it's that damn, you know... That worldly rap, man. That worldly uh, rap. And that's all he has on it. He took down all his videos, man. So it's like, man, what the hell are you doing? But that just shows you, man. You know, that, hey, how we you know, decided that that's enough for that guy. All right? Now, I think there's hope for him. Because remember, he's in this real life. He's, he's a, um, an Issacharite, so-called Mexican, like myself. Um, so, you know, yeah, I hope, you know, that brother comes to his realization you know, of that, but, you know, that's only up to you, how about Shimei Oshai, um, but back to what I was saying, um, when you look at America, the state of America, uh, as of, uh, what is it, September, I believe today is the 17th, the 17th, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, the 17th, um, of September of 2020, uh, you can clearly see there's a lot of shit going on right now, man. You got 40 million people who are on the verge of going homeless. You have more than half of American households cannot afford the house that they live in. And they also cannot afford to feed their families. This is why um, I watched a video right lately. Lord willing, I'll be able to re-upload it on my page because I think it was a very good video. Where this, this guy sounded like an Eda might be. He could have been a Jake. Uh, he was saying that, um, uh, he was saying that, and he was, he was not only just saying, he was showing pictures, aka evidence of, uh, of his statements that, um, the food lines, the food pantries, the lines are stretching for miles on end, man. Like, I mean, tens of thousands of people, you know, all over the United States, which even that's an understatement, all over the United States combined, it's, it's millions, t I would say tens of millions of people that are lining up at these um these food camps right these food pantries right to just to get a couple free food for their household okay and you can look that up yourself uh just to confirm it okay that this is what's going on right now and these people are so desperate and how can you know um because a lot of these people they're arriving four hours before the food bank even opens because if they don't, they're going to be waiting in a car line. Some people said they were there for six hours. Some were there for eight hours. And what? why? Why are they there? Just to get one bag of food, man. One bag that has like, you know, six to like eight items. Depending on the, those in their household. Okay, so if people right now are willing to sit there for a damn half a day. Well, almost half a day. Um, in the car, waste the gas money or, you know, turn the car off or turn the air off to save money. 
I'd sit there in the hot sun, heat, um, just to save a couple dollars. And all that hardship just to get a bag of food that's just going to last uh, maybe three days. I, don't, I just don't see how America can really be revived from this. I, it's, I just don't see it as being possible. Okay, this is just this is too far. Okay, the, the shit is too bad right now in America. When I say too bad, that's an understatement, man. Okay, that's an understatement. Matter of fact, there's one man. What is it? Um, I believe it's Jeff Bezos, if I'm not mistaken. I believe it was him, Jeff Bezos, um, that they said he's now worth like $200 billion or something like that. So here you have a man who is almost worth or just about going to be worth $200 billion. And yet half of Americans cannot afford their, um, their house payment. So if that man was to just give 2% or let's just say, let's just be courteous and say 5% of his wealth to just America in, it, in itself, that would completely end the whole, you know, that would end everything, man. That would end pretty much all these sufferings that the American people are going through. And, and it wouldn't really affect him because, I mean, can one man really spend $200 billion? dollars in their lifetime do you know how much a billion dollars is a billion is uh is a million one thousand times okay because a million is a thousand one thousand times so a billion is a million one thousand times if you do the math um so we're talking two hundred billion it just is unconceivable it cannot be conceived uh to even fathom how much money that actually is. But anyway, you know, getting back to what it's saying, you know, with all these facts, and not only that, um, I remember, uh, I want to say six months ago, before I moved down to Jersey, yeah, I was used to live in Florida. It's lucky about that background noise. Um, I used to live in Florida, man, at an apartment complex when this whole Corolla started. Uh, you know, I moved out, but I was planning to before then. So I didn't count um, myself into this number. But, you know, there was about 50 other people moving out of the complex over the past one week as I was moving. Because they didn't have enough to pay the, you know, $1,200 rent. Which only way that we were able to, you know, f pay for that because you have multiple people paying it. And that's, you know, what a lot of them were doing. You know, have multiple families living under one household so that you can split the bills between the families. Um, let's see, what do I want to say? So, yeah, man, out of, you know, little more than 2,000 people, you had 50 people in one week that had to move out of there because they couldn't afford it. And that's just one ap apartment complex. Think about the rest of America, man. Okay, things are bad right here. Okay, things are very bad in America right now. And it just doesn't seem possible that this can really be revived from. And think about this as well. Uh, in the coming months, you know, they, they've been trying to, you know, start up the whole school again. But they had to shut it down because, you know, certain schools, if they get one case, think about this. If a school gets one case... Of Corolla, if they get just one case, they had to shut the whole school down because that was spread like wildfire. And not only the kids will get it, they're going to take it home to their families and it's going to spread like wildfire. So this this is, this has to be the end of America, man. This has to be the time that the prophet spoke about. And if it's not, well, you know, I don't know what to say, man. This is, this is, this is the worst thing that America's ever been through, man. Okay, so we can clearly see by the prophecies and the scriptures that this has to, this has to be the time that these prophets were speaking about. Say, for an example, uh, the prophet uh, Ezra, right, just read 2nd Ezra's, the, um, the 15th and the 16th chapter. He gives some uh, visions he had of this time of trouble where you had people breaking in each other's houses because they had no food. 
uh, riots in the streets, um, and pretty much the whole collapse of uh, of the government, right? Um, you know, people dying of starvation. Yeah, even when you read the scriptures, uh, I believe it's actually Ezra's as well. Um, that basically says that those in the mountains they shall die of hunger, and they shall eat their own flesh and drink their own blood. And what is that talking about? That's talking about cannibalism. Okay, so, you know, that, all this stuff is coming, man. And it can't be avoided. Okay, there's no way around it that this clearly is the end of the United States of America. And everybody sees it. Everybody knows this. You don't have to be, you know, deep into the scriptures to know this information. People who don't even believe in the scriptures agree that, you know, things ain't looking good for America right now. Okay, so you just have to, you know, you, you have to be ignoring everything you see going on around you to say otherwise. Okay, and things ain't going to get back to normal. People have been saying, you know, in the first month of the pandemic that, you know, Lord willing, next month it gets back to normal. Here we are, what, almost seven months later? And look what's going on. It makes you wonder, man, that, you know... Uh, say for an example, uh, you know, soon you're going to have, you know, the holidays coming up, so-called holidays. Um, and then after that, you have New Year. They're going to have to, you know, stage that without people there, man. Okay, and, guess, and you know, things are going to be even worse, man, the next coming year, 20, uh, 2021. Things ain't just going to get better, man. Okay, things ain't just going to become better. When it just becomes the next year. Okay. Things are going to get even worse. And even before that event. You have um, the election. Okay. You have the presidential election. Which that's going to be absolutely insane man. Okay. If you add all these things together. Let's, let's just try to even count them. You have the whole global pandemic. The food shortages. The riots. Uh, the election. Um, uh, let's see. What else? Um, the coming holidays, right, Black Friday, uh, Thanksgiving, uh, uh, Christmas, um, I'm sure there's probably another one that I'm probably not thinking of, oh, you know you can add New Year's in there, as I said, um, yeah, that's a big one as well, um, you know, all those, oh, Halloween, they're gonna have to cancel that this year, okay, just to name a handful of them, okay, the things are things are just terrible right now, man. And it's just just being an everyday average man, just looking at these things, you can sleep, you can see that things clearly are not going to go back to normal. Okay, as people say, this is the new normal. Okay, I mean, look, everybody's been wearing masks now for six months straight, almost seven months. Okay, that's unheard of. Okay, but guess what? It's just going to get completely get worse and worse and worse, man. There's no way out of this. This clearly is the end of the end of the end. Now, I'm not saying that America is going to be destroyed tomorrow because prophecies have to happen first. The downfall of society has to happen, as in people rising up against the government, and then the government steps in with the microchip, which is the mark of the beast. And once that happens, that's it. Once that happens, America is going to be destroyed next. That's that's how prophecy is laid out. The only thing that has to happen is a collapse of the society and the mark of the beast, which is the chip. And after that, that's it. All the prophecies are fulfilled leading up to the coming of Christ, which will happen as Babylon is, uh, is destroyed. So those are the only last things that have to happen before who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ uh, comes for a second coming. Okay, and all those things are looking very likely to happen within the next 10 months leading up to the next two years. So, you know, even that seems like a stretch. Okay, um, but you know, yeah, uh, I just wanted to share that. You know, you can, you know, comment down below and give me your own interpretation of how you see this going out. Um, but you know, yeah, I want to give all praises unto you, Halabash and Yahushai, for this truth. And with that being said, I'm going to say Shalom.